Well, here in Spain today, Chris McCann and I are going to look at how UK investments and income are taxed in Spain. How are you doing, Chris? Yeah, I'm very well, thanks, Howard. And yourself? I am very well. I'm glad we're into October. <laughs> yeah. Just. So, Chris, do you find that British expatriates tend to keep hold of their UK investments, even though they plan to live in Spain long term? Well, typically, all around the world, uh, investors tend to have too much exposure to their own markets. As many of the potential clients that I speak to are from the UK, despite now living in Spain, they do tend to retain too much exposure to UK-based assets. Uh, this is partly for convenience, but also because they are familiar and they feel secure. Uh, however, that said, I think this is changing. As I've spoken about this many times during our conversations, uh, Brexit rewrote the financial services landscape for UK nationals living in EU countries. When the UK left the European single market, its financial advisory services industry lost uh, what are called EU passporting rights, meaning that UK-based financial institutions are no longer automatically authorised to give advice to EU or EEA residents. Um, one major consequence has been that many UK-based banks have had to close UK accounts owned by U EU resident clients, leaving expatriates without the bank account they may have used for years or, or even decades. So whilst many UK expatriates tend to retain UK bank accounts, ISAs, premium bonds, UK properties, changes in legislation mean it's becoming more difficult to, to do so. And people are now having to consider alternatives. Let's start then with premium bonds. I remember I had the grand sum of £52 at one time. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> One reason there's I think, so... I think look, how I would I think everybody I think everybody <laughs> seems to have at least a, a certain amount of money yes. invested in premium bonds in the UK. It's amazing. Yes, it is, it is. I think because parents do that their children and grandchildren and all that yeah. all, all that palabra. Absolutely. Yes, tradition, tradition. Anyway, one reason they're so popular is because any returns or winnings are tax free in the UK. But what happens once you're a resident in Spain? Well, as regards to being popular, as you just mentioned, I think premium bonds uh, sit at the top of the charts as regards the most retained UK assets. Uh, as well as providing a lottery style experience, possibly the main attraction uh, of investing in premium bonds is that is that any winnings have always been tax free in the UK. Uh, on becoming resident in Spain, they are no longer tax free. Instead, any winnings will be added to your general income for the year and taxed at progressive rates of income tax. These rates vary a little depending on which regions you live in, uh, reaching as high as 54% uh, in Valenciana, 49.5% uh, in the Balearics, and 47% in Andalusia and Murcia. Can you continue to hold premium bonds once you've left the UK? Uh, you can. Uh, uh, whilst uh, National Savings and Investments is a UK provider, it does still have customers that live abroad. And as a Spanish resident, you are still able to own premium bonds. However, one factor to consider is that because many British expatriates have had no choice but to close their bank accounts following Brexit, National savings and investments are now writing to their clients to inform them that it's a requirement of the terms and conditions of your NSNI account that you're able to hold and maintain a UK bank account. Hence, if you don't have a UK bank account, you'll need to close your NSNI accounts. Yes, I got a letter. <laughs> I got, yes, and I think they said that they would send the send them out to me, but it never came. I don't think, but I think that's what no. they said. Yeah, yeah, no, there's a lot of people receiving letters at the moment. Yeah, this was some time ago, actually, some time ago. Yeah, I think I think I heard the first. I I, I had the first notification from a client 
maybe maybe a year ago now. Yes, yes. Well, what about ISIS then? Is it in a similar situation? Uh, well, look, as regards owning ISIS as a, as a resident of Spain, you, whilst, you can't, whilst you can't add to them, you can technically retain your existing holdings. However, if you do retain them, you will need to bear in mind that your UK financial advisor will no longer be able to continue providing you with advice in relation to them. As regards tax, as with premium bonds, ISAs are tax-free for UK residents, but taxable for Spanish residents. Depending upon the underlying assets, any interest and gains earned from your UK ISAs will be taxable in Spain at progressive savings income tax rates, which range from 19 to 28%, depending on how much savings you income you earn in the year, and regardless of which region you live in. And how is UK bank interest rates taxed in Spain? Again, like ISAs, for Spanish residents, worldwide bank interest will be is taxable at savings income tax rates ranging from 19 to 28%. For example, let's assume that you have cash deposits of say 300,000 pounds, which is earning interest of say 5%. Your interest generated would be equal to around 15,000 pounds, and if you have no other savings income, your Spanish savings tax liability would be around 3,500 euros at current exchange rates. Are there any other popular UK investments that are taxed differently in Spain? Uh, yes, um, UK investments such as life assurance bonds, unit trusts and open-ended investment companies often provide tax relief and other advantages while you are a UK resident. However, once you become resident in Spain, these investments undergo a change in taxation treatment. As far as life assurance bonds are concerned, uh, they allow you to gather different investments into one arrangement, which makes managing them much easier. However, the tax treatment of life assurance contracts in Spain varies according to whether the contract is approved or not. An approved or compliant contract is one that meets specific requirements. Uh, under Spanish rules, for a non-Spanish life assurance company to accept business from an individual residence in Spain, they must have passported by way of establishment into Spain. What this means is that the insurance company must be in the EU has passported through their home regulator into Spain and had the product approved by the Spanish regulator of insurance companies, the DGS. There are two distinct advantages in relation to the tax treatment of Spanish compliant bonds. The first relates to when tax becomes payable. With a compliant bond, no tax is payable until you make a withdrawal. With a non-compliant bond, tax is payable on any gains, irrespective of whether you take a withdrawal or not. The second advantage relates to how much tax is paid on withdrawals. And with a compliant bond, only the gain element of the amount withdrawn is taxable. Some UK expatriates will already have established life assurance bonds, and because they will have likely been established whilst resident in the UK, they will likely be based in the UK or the channel or, or often the Channel Islands. As they are as the UK is no longer based in the EU and the Channel Islands are not in the EU, they will not be compliant bonds and will not receive the beneficial this this beneficial Spanish tax treatment. Some people will hold on to their UK property and then rent it out to earn an income. How does Spain tax UK rental income? Okay, so, so if somebody retains and, and lets a UK property, they will be liable to pay income tax in Spain on the rental income. 
they will pay tax at the general scale rates of income tax. And, uh, but it's worth noting that for Spanish residents, long-term lets currently attract a 60% deduction against the net rental income. In addition, they would be required to submit a UK tax return and pay tax on any rental income in the UK as non-exempt income. Whilst the UK-Spain Double Tax Treaty would ensure that you don't pay tax twice, the administration of such an arrangement will increase. Uh, it will increase and your ongoing costs and the hassle that you have to go through will increase. It's uh, also worth noting that as a UK based asset, the property would be liable to UK inheritance tax, regardless of your domicile. Finally, what is your advice to Spanish residents for holding onto UK assets? Is tax the only consideration? Look, the Spanish tax regime is completely different to the UK tax regime. So any tax planning arrangements that were previously set up in the UK are likely to be uh, are, are unlikely to be effective here in Spain. To ensure the best possible outcome, I would suggest that any listeners that have retained UK assets consult with a knowledgeable advisor who can provide cross-border guidance. This will help you navigate the complexities of the UK and Spanish tax systems, understand the interaction between them, and identify tax planning opportunities tailored to your unique circumstances. Remember that UK-based advisors can no longer provide regulated financial services to EU residents through the EU passporting system. If you have a UK advisor, Assess whether your advisor can continue to provide guidance and execute investment instructions, or if there are any limitations to their services. Evaluating your options can lead to profitable outcomes and ensure your financial affairs are optimised to align with the Spanish framework. Therefore, it's prudent not only to focus on the tax implications, but also consider the broader factors that impact the performance and suitability of your affairs. So if someone wants to overhaul their investment portfolio to make it more suitable for a Spanish resident, how do you suggest they go about it? Well, first of all, I suggest that they contact one of our local uh, advisors. They can do this either by visiting our website, blevinsfranks.com, where they will be able to find the contact details of all of our local advisors. Alternatively, they can uh, complete a contact form on our website and somebody from Blevins Franks will be in touch to suggest the most suitable next steps. Well, many thanks, Chris. We'll talk again perhaps in a month. Uh, I think, yeah, maybe three weeks, Howard. Three weeks, okay. The sooner <laughs> the, sooner, the better. There we go. <laughs> all right. I look forward to it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Howard. Bye for now.